Dr. Clayton Lane. In this video I'll discuss cartilage restoration of the knee. This will be the first of a series of videos and in this one we'll overview some of the treatment options for cartilage injury. First of all let's talk about the role of cartilage. Cartilage lines all moving joints in our body. If we look at this diagram to the right this is an MRI image of the knee. Um, this is taken from the side or a sagittal projection. You can see this gray area is the bone of the femur and this gray area here is the bone of the tibia. And the highlighted surfaces you see here nicely is the cartilage lining around the femur and the tibia. And the purpose of the cartilage is to distribute the load so it can be thought of as a car tire we don't run around uh, in our cars on the rims. Instead, we have the rubber tire there to help distribute the load. And if you look at this point where the femur meets the tibia, it's a fairly small area, just like a car wheel touching the ground. And if there were no soft, rubbery surface there, then the two hard surfaces of the bone of the femur and the tibia would come into contact. And it's not hard to see how that would cause rapid wear and even fracture of the bone. Additionally, the role of the cartilage is to reduce friction. You can see that this point of contact is going to slide throughout the range of motion knee all along the course of the femoral condyle here. Therefore, it's going to be advantageous if there's a low level of friction to allow this to slide easily. And in fact, the smooth surface of the cartilage combined with the joint fluid has been found to be as slippery as ice on ice, which is a fairly frictionless surface. The difficulties in treating cartilage comes from the fact that cartilage has a limited ability to repair itself. Unlike muscle or tendon or bone in the body, which has a uh, enormous ability to repair itself, cartilage can't do that. And the reason is because cartilage doesn't have blood vessels nerves or lymphatics like other tissues in the body. If you see this microscopic picture here to the right, this area, the red area, is cartilage and below that is bone and you can see in the bone these are actually blood vessels and passages for healing cells to work their way through the bone and do their work. Cartilage, however, doesn't have that, and therefore cartilage relies on diffusion from joint fluid or synovial fluid in order to get its nourishment, and that's a very slow process. So if you have an injury in this red area of cartilage, it's going to be very uh, difficult, uh, if possible at all, for that to repair itself. Causes of injury to cartilage, obviously you can have trauma if um, a force um, is sustained to the knee that's greater than its ability to withstand it, then obviously you'll have a fracture as seen in here. The bone underneath is fractured and the cartilage is separated from it and that's called an osteochondral defect. Osteo meaning bone, chondral meaning cartilage, and then defect obviously the fracture. A lesser known condition but very common condition is something called osteochondritis dissecans. And what that is, is when the bone underneath the cartilage in this area actually dies first. And then with pressure on the cartilage above, the cartilage collapses into it or breaks off. And, and, and that's termed osteochondritis dissecans, and it's extremely common, especially in adolescents. And then obviously there's degenerative changes, which essentially means wear and tear. Just like the tires of our car wear down, the cartilage can wear down as well. What determines whether a cartilage injury is repairable? First, we want to know how big is the injury. Um, that can determine whether or not we're going to be able to repair it. Additionally, we need to know whether it's a traumatic injury versus chronic arthritis. If we look at this arthroscopic picture here, here's an area of cartilage loss. This is actually bone, the bone of the femur, and a corresponding area of cartilage loss on the tibia. This defect, while it's not enormous, is not repairable because this is chronic arthritis. And the reason we can't fix this is because we know from studies that this cartilage along the edges and throughout the rest of the knee is abnormal and poor quality, and so just fixing this one spot is not going to solve the problem. 
This is also a nice diagram showing how if you have bone on bone arthritis, then that's a tremendous amount of force that goes through these surfaces and causing uh, and can lead to pain and fracture and other. Patient characteristics are very important. Often people don't realize that um, a patient's age is important in how we treat cartilage injuries, whether or not they have diabetes, they smoke, or have rheumatoid arthritis or other inflammatory conditions. And also the patient has to have the ability to be compliant with the post-operative protocol, which will be very important as well. Non-operative treatments. We hear a lot about glucosamine chondrite and sulfate in the press and elsewhere. And that's for good reason, because glucosamine chondrite and sulfate has been proven to be as effective as some of the prescription anti-inflammatories as far as treating knee pain from cart uh, cartilage injury or arthritis. NSAIDs is an uh, acronym for non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. An example of that would be Advil or Aleve. These help reduce the inflammation associated with cartilage injuries and can be helpful. Hyaluronic acid, you may have heard that termed as uh, rooster comb injections. The basic premise behind that is that it's a lubrication for the joint and we talked about how cartilage needs to be a frictionless surface. Well hyaluronic acid wor works along those lines and reducing the friction and helping smooth edges where there's a rough area of cartilage then lubricating that area can help uh, limit further damage. Activity modification is always an option. Low impact exercise is be better for the joints than uh, otherwise. I always like to say that motion's good and impact's bad. And a good example of that would be a stationary bike is going to be a whole lot easier on the knees and other joints than running uh, miles on the road, for example. Restricting work activities for a limited time may be helpful as well. And then there's always physical therapy. As far as our surgical options, which I'll go through briefly here, the first and most common is what's called microfracture. You may have heard of abrasion arthroplasty. That's really a thing of the past as we found that microfracture, a similar procedure, is better in most cases. In microfracture, what we're attempting to do is restore the blood supply to the area of cartilage injury. We said that cartilage doesn't have a blood supply. Well, what if we punch holes in the bone, as seen here with a Stedman pick, and then allow blood to flow into that area and allowing scar tissue to fill this defect? Uh, well, that's been found to help reduce pain with certain small defects in people to, with low or medium demands. ORIF stands for Open Reduction and Internal Fixation. Here you can see an osteochondral fragment uh, broken away in the knee again. This is on the medial femoral condyle. Well, this fragment nicely keys into position, has a good bony base, so that's going to be a very good candidate for ORIF. Um, various hardware is used in order to fix that in place, and in this case, these bioabsorbable screws were used to fix it. And then you can see as the knee goes through a range of motion, you've uh, restored the anatomy and helped limit uh, pain and wear at that site. The next option is osteochondral autograph transfer, also known as the OATS procedure. Um, and when taken multiple times, as seen here with many plugs, it's referred to as a mosaoplasty because of the appearance it has. But the basic premise is we have a defect in the knee, and what we can do is take cartilage from a place in the knee where we don't need it and then transfer it to where we do. So you can see here in the bottom right corner this is the size of the defect this is the weight bearing surface of the knee joint we really have to have cartilage here so what we do is take plugs from a area along the edge of the joint in a spot where we know we don't need cartilage from anatomic studies we take that cartilage and uh, fill the defect autologous chondrocyte implantation is another option also known as ACI. In this procedure, we take a biopsy or a very small piece of healthy cartilage from the knee and we actually can grow it in the lab 
and after about six weeks we have enough cells to come back isolate our defect as seen here and then create a little pocket over that defect using uh, periosteum or a synthetic type uh, tissue and then we can inject our cells into that pocket allow them to stick long enough so that they can take and grow and then restore normal cartilage just like what we have elsewhere in the knee and then finally there's allograft or cadaver and in this case we can take a piece of bone and cartilage from a cadaver and exactly match the defect in the knee and uh, fix that in place with bioabsorbable screws or other and allow that to fill our defect and again then you have cartilage, healthy cartilage uh, restored. And all of this is an attempt to postpone or prevent putting metal and plastic in the knee uh, with various types of knee replacements. So in summary, uh, other than fixing a osteochondral fracture, the ORAF, our options for restoration are microfracture, OATS, ACI, and allograft. In general, microfracture is better for small injuries. The pros are that it's easy. There's no need to disturb healthy cartilage in the knee in order to perform it. The downside is though is the result is fibrocartilage in the defect which is not as good as true healthy cartilage. And also a return to play can take up to nine months for athletes. Additionally, there's been some studies that show while it's very successful in reducing pain up to 90%, there is some decline in activity in these patients reported over time. So even though they're having less pain, we're also finding that they're not doing as much as they were doing preoperatively. The OATS procedure can be used for slightly bigger defects in the cartilage, up to six centimeters. It also is nice because we can use it in areas of large bone loss like the osteochondritis desiccans where I told you the bone died. These plugs can fill that up. And another advantage is that it's actually cartilage we're putting in the defect unlike the fibrocartilage of microfracture. The return to play is a little bit less than what you see in microfracture. The downside is though is that you have to disturb healthy cartilage. Remember we're taking it from a healthy area and transferring it to a spot where we need it and also it's technically harder than a microfracture. The bright side of that is also there is has been shown a higher rate of return to athletic activity in OATS uh, patients as opposed to microfracture patients and that's been fairly well documented. ACI or autologous chondrocyte implantation you can see there's no size restrictions an advantage is that it is healthy cartilage that's implanted into the defect and also there's no need to disturb healthy cartilage in order to do it. The downside is that it's two procedures. It's technically harder, it's very expensive, and return to play takes over 12 months. Again, a note is that it takes six weeks for this cartilage to grow in lab. It can be put on hold by freezing it uh, for up to six months, but that's about the limits of how long we can keep it. Allograft or cadaver, there's no size limits whatsoever. There's no need to disturb healthy cartilage, and we have as much bone and cartilage as we need. So those are all the pros. The downside is a slight infection risk. There's also a prolonged return to play, 12 months or more, and the cartilage is not quite as good as what you would see with ACI. This has been found in studies to be better in the older age groups. It can be used up to 45 years of age, whereas all of these other procedures have shown markedly reduced results if you're older than 30 years of age.